Hey, everybody. <laughs> we get, hey, Hi. how's it going? <laughs> we got an audio. Hi, everybody. Can you hear us? Hello. Oh. Okay. Better? Yeah. Good to see Good to you see. both. <laughs> Hi. Wow. Pat, you're in a an amazing place. Yeah. England. <laughs> but that's not where I am. I <laughs> get in. <laughs> I have no light by my computer, so I'm a little hard to see. But oh, yeah. Hi. Hello. I'm so happy to, to have this chance to talk. Yay. Yeah. yeah. This is great. We were gonna start off obviously just by welcoming everybody and uh, see if where you're coming from and if you're a part of the garden club, but you guys were part of the garden club. <laughs> <laughs> we we're gonna do a big poll, but there's only, a, there's only a few in here so far, so. <clears throat> hey, how's it going? Yeah, it'd be, it's gonna be great to see, uh, hear from people like how their own gardens are going um, if you have any updated, any questions, uh, just goods and bads, like troubleshooting, you know, how's it, how's it been so far, but we're still welcoming everybody. Hello, 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 Byron, Brooke. Mm -hmm. uh, hello. Where's everybody else coming from? If you, if you were not part of the garden club, I'd like to know, see if where part of the world you are broadcasting from. <laughs> I'm from I'm from Longmont, um, Colorado, which is uh -huh. near Boulder. Yeah. 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 I was actually visiting farms there last year in Longmont. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, we have a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. Where Where are you from? We're Ooh. in San Diego County, Southern oh, California. Cool. Mm -hmm. Right. Wonderful. Yeah. 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 Oh, Oh, sorry. No, I was just saying it looks like a beautiful day where you are. <laughs> it is, yeah. yeah. Well, on summer. <laughs> yeah. A lot of times there's a lot of cloud coverage this time of year, but uh, right now it's pretty sunny. Which is yeah, interesting. blue skies. We call, it, we call it June gloom around here because it's so cloudy. But uh, like you can see today, it's not. But <laughs> Gorgeous. <laughs> yeah. Byron, where are you coming from? Hey, hey everybody! I am uh, about an hour from Toronto, uh, between uh, Toronto and London in Ontario, Canada. So greetings cool. all! Yeah, greetings. Nice. Let's see, and greetings. some. Yeah, and Byron, I can't remember if you were part of the Garden Club or not, or Brooke, or if you guys were involved in that at, at all, or if just um, yeah, because <clears throat> we did a lot of videos, and we saw a lot of faces, but I don't remember seeing you guys, but. Some a lot of people were just doing the, you know, reading reading the content and the course. Um, so I don't know. If, were you guys involved in that or no or no? Yeah, no. I. Uh, okay, Byron. sorry. Yeah, I ahead. was. I connected with you guys in Hawaii for a bit yeah. of it. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Different, yeah. Back, different background now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, everybody, <clears throat> Aubrey and uh, Brent, how's it going? Welcome. Uh, we were just talking about like trying to see where everybody's coming from. And if you are part of the garden club or not, um, love to know like what part of the world you're, you're, you're living or where you're broadcasting from. <clears throat> yeah. Cause everything's different climates are, uh, different and regions are different, obviously. So different soil conditions and different growing conditions. So it's just kind of good to know where everybody's at. I'm in Iowa. Long, uh... <laughs> you're in Iowa. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty cool. Surrounded by corn fields and soybeans. So yeah. I got my little container. I did the the course, the garden club course. Yeah. Um, I didn't quite get it finished. I'm kind of just chugging along at my own pace, but <laughs> I started a container garden on the deck and nice. I was gonna post some pictures. It's going pretty well. Yeah. Starting to get munched on though by insects. So mm -hmm. The yeah. kale, especially. <laughs> oh. yeah. Kale is interesting. I mean, we could talk, I mean, this troubleshooting, a lot of things, you know, obviously it's uh, soil quality, moisture content. Sometimes kale in the middle of the summer doesn't, well, in my area, if it's too hot, it just kind of starts to bolt or go to, go to seed or it starts kind of towards the end. It likes a little bit cooler temperatures. So if it's like, you know, above 
80, 85 where you are. Yeah, it's been hot here. It'll so. start to it'll start to stress and it, it likes that cool season, maybe you know, like that 60 degree kind of weather. Um, or um, okay. just but not say you can't grow it, it's just like more bugs will come because the plant itself is kind of stressed. So uh, you can do some shade cloth or just, you know, um, keep keep trying. Maybe uh, <clears throat> sometimes like a f uh, some some kelp meal or it helps like the the rigor the, the vigor of the of the root system. You can try to if there's bugs like aphids, you can spray it off with some some water for at first and kind of pinch it off with your fingers, or you can use a spray bottle with some soapy water. Uh, that kind of that tends to help sometimes too. Yeah, <laughs> jumping into technical things already. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Brent, where are you calling in from? Hey, everybody. Um, I'm calling from Indianapolis. Thanks. So Indiana, similar yeah. climate, I'm guessing, as Iowa. But yeah, um, yeah. I just I don't know anything about the Garden Club. This is the first session I've joined. Um, my right. wife and I just started a fruit farm. Uh, wow. We planted grapes and apples and raspberries. So, wow, nice. Yeah, if, just to give a little context, we had a, a three week course called the Garden Club, and it was a a lot of content with just how to start your garden, like why, you know, um, and then with soil health and container gardening, irrigation, how to set up irrigation, and then we just had like we had weekly live Q and A's like this where uh, people could just ask questions and I could kind of um, give some feedback or help, help troubleshoot. So kind of, you know, walk people through the garden building process. Mm -hmm. So now we're just kind of doing updates uh, cause that was about a month and a half ago or so. And when the last course, last uh, course ended. So um, yeah, just seeing how people's gardens are going, how it's been, you know, it's been, a, plants are growing for a month or so things start to sprout, some things get stressed, some things, uh, but yeah, so that's what we're doing now. Yeah, but obviously it's an open event for everyone. If you have any garden questions, farm questions, this is the space. Yeah. <laughs> and we're doing these, I think, once a month. Once a month here. Now, uh, we were doing them back in the day and then took a pause, did the garden club, and now we're bringing them back. So yeah, this will be an ongoing monthly event where you can, yeah, just ask any and all questions. Samantha, I wanna hear from you. How's it all going? It's so hot here. <laughs> I need a course in artistic uh, shade cloth. Um, you know, I mean, it, it looks like a shanty or something I'm living in just because it's like every place needs shade. We've been 99, 100 degrees for like four or five days now, and it's going to go on for a while. So, but... Uh but the back big area that I planted as part of my project prayer class is doing great. I mean, it's really growing, but we're getting to the point where <laughs> things are getting nibbled on and, and it seems like things need some help. And then I go to the, 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 the garden, the nursery in town, and it's a wall of organic fertilizer. And I'm just thinking, surely the forest floor, <laughs> <laughs> has some of this somehow but not in a box form and I wouldn't have to spend $500 you know I, so I'm kind of overwhelmed with okay my eggplant probably needs something different than my pepper plants than my you know and so I'm not knowing or do I just go sprinkle some chicken pellet poop pellets on it and hope for the best <laughs> you know so that's where I'm at things are growing but I'm also getting to the point of the heat and the, I don't know what to do for these plants going forward. So. Yeah. Um, There's, <laughs> yeah, a lot of, a lot of questions. Kind of a things. huge, my biggest question is, you know, you watch all these tips and tricks videos and they're all trying to pump as much out of these plants as possible. I'm just trying to learn about the plants, you know? So what is like the most basic thing I can do for these plants to help them grow and to help me learn about how they, how they grow? <laughs> um, most basic things. I mean, like we talked about in the course a lot is just, you know, soil health is number one and it's going to really show in the plant, like the, 
with healthy soil and like a micro a biologically diverse soil that will allow the nutrients to be taken up by the plant. So we, first of all, we need, you know, really healthy soil, meaning it's the organic matter with, with different manures as, or composted manures. And then just making sure that it's like, you have to dig down and like, and check out, check out the water moisture level underneath the soil, you know, six inches down, a foot down if you can. Um, that's number one. And like, so moisture has to be relatively moist mm -hmm. and not like in a, in a, and constantly moist, not just, you know, where it's moist for a day or two and then it dries out for three, a yeah. couple of days. If it's dry and wet, dry, wet, it causes a lot of stress. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mid, mid, um, season, like after we've already planted. So we're in the mid season, then I, I do like to do a uh, top dressing of uh, composted chicken manure. If you, if you can and just uh, do like a light, you know, like half inch on the, on the top of the surface and you just kind of scratch it in. And that uh, tends to help, help out a lot. And like I was saying mm -hmm. with Aubrey is um, um, there's kelp meal or like seaweed meal tends to help a lot with the root systems and a lot of the plant health. Um, and so if you don't want to buy anything, then, you know, we're making our own compost and, and different compost, making a compost tea which is like a liquid form of compost with a lot of the microbes in there. And then you can spray that on the, on your leaves and that, and the plant can also take the nutrients in, in from the leaves. Um, yeah, we didn't, we didn't really get into how to make a compost tea and compost piles, um, but they are things that are extremely beneficial to do at your house. And um, I would say that it's really hard to find a store-bought version of of a biologically diverse compost or compost tea. I so, did take a class, uh, the, the waste resource management uh -huh. in Riverside had one and it was it was quite lovely actually. They have a whole area a garden with stuff sculptures made out of stuff they pulled out of the landfill and monarch butterfly stuff and it was really great. So I've signed up to be a volunteer there so great. I can learn more about vermiculture because we need yeah. more worm poop in our life so mm -hmm. <laughs> can i give a testimonial yeah. i yeah. had a um a zucchini plant bought from a commercial nursery uh, working in a raised bed so our soil is from home depot uh -huh. uh, and it the leaves were turning yellow and i thought oh we're gonna lose it well i made some compost some worm tea and mm -hmm. drift it on the leaves, the neck, because it had ants on it. It was the only plant in the bed that had ants. Mm -hmm. I put compost tea, uh, worm tea on it. Next day, the ants were all gone. All uh, right. Amazing. Nice. Cool. That was ver vermicompost? That was uh, a vermicompost? Yeah, just from a, a bag of worm castings that I made tea. Great. Yeah. Yeah, it's it. Verm Go ahead. Oh, it works. Just... Yeah. Ver vermicompost is probably the most biologically diverse type of compost tea. It's, it's just worm, vermicompost is worm casting. Uh, it's like water ran through worm castings. So the worm castings themselves, or AKA worm poop, is uh, has lots of biology and lots of bacteria and fungus in it, like beneficial. So uh, it's, it's easy to do at home to make a little worm, worm bin with kitchen scraps and food scraps. And uh, once you have a lot of worms in your, you know, uh, kitchen scrap bin, then then uh, make your own compost tea, and that that stuff is just amazing for foliar applications and soil applications. So, how do you transplant worms into your existing bed? You just take a handful of them and dig a hole and throw them in there. Yep. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. Just as long as they're not exposed to light to sunlight, they don't really they don't breathe through, or they don't. I'm not sure they're not. They don't deal well with sunlight at all. I think they breathe through their skin, kind of. So they just uh, just bury them. Keep them if, when you're transporting them. Try to keep them covered, yeah. and um, and then dig a hole like like I said or like you said, and then put them in there a couple inches down underneath the soil, and they will stay in there as long as it's relatively moist as well and it has organic matter for them to kind of eat or roots for them to kind of nibble on or 
bacteria to nibble on, which are on the roots. So if you're putting them into a into a bed that's just you know Home Depot soil, uh -huh. are they going to have enough to eat there without eating up your plant roots? They won't really eat the plant roots, but and they may not have enough. Um, depends on the wood bag at Home Depot because they there's there's a lot of mulches like a like um, it doesn't have a whole lot of binding power. You know, it's like the 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 brand, uh, there's little tiny sticks like little tiny mulch uh, in these raised garden bed mixes that you can buy in bags at Home Depot, and a lot of times there's not a the humus which is like the binder. We need some of that, more of that in there. And um, that can come from your the native soil. So you can mix some of the, whatever you have on under, you know, underneath your feet and your proper, on, your, on the yard or around um, somewhere close by where you can just kind of put a shovel into the soil, into the ground. Um, that's the sand, silt and clay. It'll start to bind up with that, with that mulchy kind of wood, um, wood material that comes in, in, in those bags. Um, what else? And you can also, it's better to put, like if you're doing food scrap, if you're using food scraps, it's better to compost those a little bit first, but you can just kind of bury those into your raised bed too. And the worms will just go in and eat and eat that. Yeah. You, know, so you had enough space in your raised bed for just like, you know, a bowl size uh, to um, put a, you don't have to put a bowl in there, but a bowl size. You just yeah. dig, dig some, dig a little hole, put your food scraps in there, and the worms will go after and eat that. You can also use cardboard on on top or mulches. That's what kind of wet. They'll they'll stick around for that too. Yeah. Eat that. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Can I ask with worms there. I yeah. never really thought about uh, transplanting relocation program for worms into your planters. <laughs> is that is that a, a doable thing? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, like if, if you have a worm. Uh, yeah, say if you have a worm, bu a bucket full of, you know, food scraps and has worms in it and you're making like a vermicompost uh, bucket and there's, it's full of worms, just, you can take a handful, you know, and literally dig, put them in yeah. the, wherever you want them okay. and dig a little hole and put them in, in the soil, cover it. It's pretty, just as easy as that. They, the worms tend to um, self-regulate their population in, so if they're in a confined area, um, they're only going to populate so much based on their space and based on how much food they have. So, um, as soon as you take some out, like leave some in that original bin, but take like a handful out, but leave, you know, more than half or, you know, 75, 90% of the worms in that original bucket. Um, and they will like, they will keep populating in there. If you take some out, it's not, not a huge deal. And sometimes if you, if you are doing worm, compost you can you can look in there you'll see like some little clear eggs like little clear you know tiny little pellet ball things those are eggs or you can see the tiny little worms those are that's a good sign you can um transport those too as long as you're not like, like i said as long as they're not exposed to sunlight too for too long you know just a couple seconds um at you know or not at all just keep, keep them covered because they do not like the sun hmm. yeah but no it's no problem I transport them all the time. <laughs> so are those free range, free range worms? Free range, <laughs> or day, uh, all right. pasture raised eggs, or, uh, or, or, or eggs, I should say. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Can you over fertilize? Could you add too much? Yes, oh. yes. Um, also, to, there's so many different kinds of fertilizer. Um, so, mm -hmm. You can definitely over fertilize. You have to look at the ingredients list on if you're buying fertilizer. I tend to go with things that are uh, obviously it's organic materials, um, meaning there are. You have to look at on the back of the of the box or the back of your uh, fertilizer bag because on the bottom it'll say something like where it's derived from the ingredients list, and if it says anything like so, uh, with the word sodium in it. It'll say like sodium nitrate or sodium bicarbonate or something. And anything that has sodium in front of it is not good. Yeah. Even though they sell it as an organic fertilizer, it's just a, it's, it's a, uh, they use sodium salt, aka salt, to bind up some of these um, nutrients. And 
it's it's a short term gain with a with long term devastation, I should say, or long term <laughs> neg negative effects. Yeah. So you will see like a short boost, and yeah. over fertilizing meaning if you're if you use too much of one nutrient, that means you're locking up a nutrient. Uh, a different nutrient. So if there's too much nitrogen, then you could be locking up calcium. So in or, a way to not do too much or to just um, like a, uh, a safety precaution or like a rule of thumb is, you know, using some, is I've been saying a lot about chicken manure, complex chicken manure. It tends to be really well balanced. And, um, and I, I, you could still use too much of that, but you know, if you're putting on like a half inch to one inch on top of the soil, that's, that's plenty. And, um, you know, once, uh, like once a month or one, every couple, once every couple months, mm. that would be, that, that'd be okay too. Yeah. Uh, well, this yeah. soil came, <clears throat> It's an organic raised bed soil and it's got chick composted chicken manure and yep. bat guano. Yep. Yep. And um, kelp yep. meal. Yep. And that's so, good. So that's I don't good. know if that's enough for the start and we just need to add some throughout the growing season or? Yeah. Sometimes you just, uh, like once every month or once every couple months, just like a, you know, a half inch of, of. So the bags that you have are, it's mostly, you know, it says peat moss on it or, or composted yeah. forest for floor products. Yeah. So that's like the ba that's like the bulk of it. And then it just has a little bit of the amendments like chicken manure, bat guano. Um, so when you're, when you're amending or adding fertilizer after that original building of the, of the garden, you're, you want just the pure like composted chicken manure or pure bat guano or pure um, kelp meal, as opposed to, that soil bag, which is most, you know, probably 80 to it's probably 90% um, peat moss or forest floor mix. So okay. that'll probably be like the first ingredient on there. Okay. Uh, but those other fertilizers are good. Like kelp meal is really good. Just like I said, get the pure kelp meal. Don't get a pelleted version that has, that is like a so uh, sodium in it. And the same thing with like feather meal or bat guano, just get the pure composted bat guano. Um, the pure, the pure forms of those as opposed to a, a pellet or a, a salt based. And is alpaca good? I just heard about alpaca manure. Yes, yeah. alpaca manure is great. So it's also a different, um, a, a mixture of, man, of different manures and inputs. So alpaca is, is one, Ch chicken manure tends to be the most, like the most well-rounded. So if you're going to use one, you can just use that. Uh, but having different sources like cow manure, bat guano, alpaca manure, um, those are manures then you want also plant-based compost which is you know your peat moss your forest floor mix your um, grass clippings uh, leaves things like that okay yeah and the each on your on the box of fertilizer it will say a recommended um dosage or like you know a cup a spoonful or a cupful per um you know, square footage. So I do recommend going on the, on the lighter side because I've over fertilized in the past and it seems to, it's like a short term game with like a long term solution. So even though it doesn't just look at the box for like recommended uh, applications because too much can be uh, have negative consequences. It's like taking like aspirin or something. One or two is okay, but taking 10 is not good. Thanks. Yeah. Hopefully that helps a little bit. It's so hard. It's, there's a lot of context and are a lot of different, uh, you know, components and it's very complex. So I'll try and hopefully that helps out a little bit. Um, I have a question. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, so in our garden, like half of the beds didn't grow and the other halves yeah. were pretty abundant and thriving. Uh, so you want to talk about sure. those reflections? Um, this is the first, like I have a garden space. This is the side kind of side garden that we're in right now. Um, but there's a, a portion up there that are, it's probably like 20 feet long and there's five, five rows at they're 20 feet long. And on one end of the, 
like the first half, like the 10, first 10 feet are, you know, things are like a foot tall or foot and a half tall, but on the, the, the second half, like 10 feet to 20 feet, everything is twice as big. And I'm like, what's going on? It's the same. I use the same fertilizer or the same compost, the same soil. It's all, it's all there. So I'm trying to like derive what it is. Um, one thing is water pressure. Usually on lines, uh, they'll, they'll have more pressure towards the end of the line. So it's just getting more water. The other thing is there's, there's been a lot of um, invasive trees on this property. So there's uh, sometimes I have this, it's a South American pepper tree, but it has roots that go into the ground and it has like oils in it that tend to inhibit or sorry, make other things not grow as much as much. So I'm thinking that there's a combination of those things. And also this, uh, I wasn't here a year ago. So, and that was a grass, grassy area. It could have had some, you know, pest or herbicide or pesticide spray on it. And I'm just kind of um, seeing the effects of that uh, the next, the next year. So we did a lot of cover crop to kind of just get that, get that biology, soil, organic matter up. And, um, but it's a constant uh, checking in and like wondering why things are happening and then troubleshooting and yes. figuring it out as you go. All day long. Yeah. <laughs> that's the, beautiful, that's the fun part. And also the, you know, like the, the, the just our, uh, kind of frustrating part. Cause you're like, but it gives you something to do. So, and it's like, <laughs> keeps you busy. It's, that's part of it. Cause it's never, never a dull moment and it's never stagnant. It's always, it's very complex and always changing. And that's a, it's a beautiful thing to, beautiful thing to realize that you just can't control everything. Mm -hmm. So and nature knows better than we do, I'm sure. So, <laughs> yeah, that was my point about going to the, to the nursery and seeing all those fertilizers. It's like, surely things grew before you yeah. could come by all this stuff. So what, what is growing around here that has what this plant means, you know, so I'm sure it's here. So just just takes time to figure it out. Yeah, and like I, like I said, or hopefully it can keep um, emphasizing that it's the, the biology in the soil right. that makes the nutrients available for the plants. Right. So usually in year one of any garden, even mine, there's just a very, there's a lack of biological diversity. So using compost teas and vermicompost, those are a way to accelerate that um, biological, it's a biological inoculant, we call it. So we're just adding different, uh, different microbes, extremely important, even if there's, you know, poor soils, mm -hmm. but yeah, your, your one's always, is always the toughest and it gets better, you know, year two, year, th year three. Uh, but if you can do some compost teas. With the compost teas, um, do you like, I don't know if the ferment is the right word, but like, yeah. um, how do you, I guess, how do you make those? I've always kind of wondered what the right way to do it is. Sure, sure. I'll, I'll give you the basic uh, rundown. And um, it's similar to making, you know, a pot of green tea or like tea that you drink. So mm -hmm. you have water and you have a, um, like a mesh bag of some sort. And then you're putting compost. Like if you have either buy it or you can make it yourself it's better to do it yourself if you can so you're putting that physical you know solid compost humic compost which is you know grassy materials or broken down organic matter putting it into that mesh bag that has like you know it's a filter it has kind of screen and then put that bag dip it into the a bucket of water so you're literally making like <clears throat> okay and are you water are you leaving it there for yeah. a so period then a little bit more, a little bit more after that. So that's like the basic process. And, but it's good to have a little bit of sugar. Like you use black strap molasses, just a couple. I was, I was, a, I, in our um, garden club, I was saying to add a little bit more, but I've found, done a little more research and you don't need much. So maybe like, um, like a half a cup for a five gallon bucket. You know, it's not, not a whole lot. Uh, I was saying more like a a cup or a pint for 50 gallons so that's kind of doesn't translate that well but um half a cup for like a five gallon bucket maybe even less um so 
that's essentially like food for the microbes. They'll, they'll eat the sugar and they also need some air. So you either stir it yourself or um, like every couple hours for, you know, for 24 hours or the, be the easier way to do it is getting an aeration stone, which is uh, from like aquariums yeah. or, or pools or ponds. And so 24 hours, you leave the bubbler on or the aerator on for 24 hours. That's usually pretty good when it's when it's warmer out, like above 80, above 90, it'd probably take less time. But 12 to 24 hours is, is pretty good. And then in the wintertime, maybe 24 to 36 hours of, of the aeration. Uh, so yeah, when you to get your mesh mesh bag full of compost and it, just a couple handfuls for like a five gallon bucket, um, put it into the, the water just like room temp and water. Room, room temp water. You can, um, as soon as you fill up a five gallon bucket of water, the best thing to do honestly is to, um, leave it out either overnight or, or at least for 30 minutes or an hour that will allow, not only allow the temperature to reach you know, ambient, um, ambient temperature, wherever your location is. And, uh, it also off gases, any of the, if it's tap water or, um, you know, city water that has, sometimes has a lot of chlorine or chloramines in it. So if you let it sit for at least 30 minutes, that chlorine can off gas significantly. So sometimes I like just leave it out overnight, but at least 30 minutes to an hour is, is fine too. Um, so yeah, put the tea bag in. Put the tea bag into the into the water. You can kind of massage the bag at that point too. It'll kind of so it kind of uh, breaks up any clumps and it, and uh, the the water and the sugars are then in contact with the mesh bag and the and the compost in the mesh bag. Um, put so the molasses in at this point. Yeah, you can do the molasses time. before, and you can it's kind of it can be kind of thick, so you can stir around. Um, uh, yeah, sometimes I like to put the mesh bag in first and then squeeze it, take the mesh bag out and then add the sugar, stir it and then stir it around. Um, but you can do either, you can do either way where you do the water and the molasses, and stir it so that it's, that it's uh, fully diluted and then put the mesh bag in. So it doesn't matter. I don't think it matters too much. I've heard more so you should add the bag first, bag the compost and the water here and then add sugar after that. So then uh, once, once that's like ready, then you just use it as like a foliar spray or onto yeah. the soil? Both, both. Mm -hmm. um, so plants can take it up um, via the, their leaves. So a foliar spray, if you have a, uh, a, a sprayer or a, or a water bottle kind of sprayer or a backpack sprayer that has, looks like, you know, you're spraying <laughs> pesticides or something, but um, you can have compost good compost tea in there get both sides of the leaves underneath and on top and mm -hmm. on the soil surface uh it tends to be really good on as a foliar application things uh plants really take it in the certain plants like kale and things in the brassica family have a um certain amount of uh like i don't know what they call it it's, but they it repels water you know so like if you you can sometimes on a kale plant or something you can drop some water and you'll see it just run off so it doesn't really absorb very well. So there are certain plants that don't absorb that well through their uh, through their leaves. Um, but soil applications are just right on the soil, especially in the root zone, like wherever the if the plant is growing like that, just right uh, maybe six inches in diameter around that root that root ball. That's where all the biology is is living. So you want to keep keep that going. Yeah. So. You can put it, like I said, a new backpack sprayer. Sometimes you have to strain it out again because from your compost mesh, compost, your, the, the compost in the mesh bag, sometimes some particles can get, uh, you know, into the into your five gallon bucket. So you might have to strain it one more time because then you put it into a sprayer, it can clog the sprayer or something. Uh, yeah. And how often do you spray? Uh. I don't do it that often. I don't even do it once a month, because, but when you're uh, maybe just starting out the gardens, maybe once a week or once a month. And I try to do it not in the middle of the day, you know, do it either early morning or later at night yeah. or, you know, in the evening. Cause that's first of all, when less there's less wind and there's no heat. So, and no sunlight, these microbes will die in the sun. So I do it when the sun is very, 
calm or like so early morning or in the in the, in the evenings actually uh, so yeah start off with once a week the and the, the compost teas i would i'd i would say it'd be hard to over compost tea <laughs> like you can do it a, you can do it a lot it's just like really good really good nutrients as long as there's not too much sugar i mean i wouldn't say too much sugar but a couple uh, teaspoons or at least like a half cup for a five gallon bucket is uh more is plenty yeah awesome that's amazing where do you learn this stuff what do i learn where do i learn this stuff <laughs> yeah it's just a year like doing <laughs> i don't know years of yeah uh intriguing very intriguing and i I first learned about compost teas when I was down in, it was one of my first permaculture courses in, in Costa Rica. They were using um, plant derived, uh, they would just make their own, they would take stuff from the jungle and all the green material and put it into a pile. And then we'd, we would put that and they fermented it or like composted it and, you know, put it into a foliar application. And I was like, what the heck is this? And there's <laughs> that stuff that they've been doing for, thousands of years in that area you know they call it um mama which is like em it was like infective microorganisms mm. but it was yeah something they did along you know and then i you know you do you do some you get inspired and do a couple google searches and you're like oh this is a lot of people do this stuff <laughs> and yeah so you listen to a lot of podcasts yeah. he reads a lot of books and books, a lot podcasts. of trial by error <laughs> i spent a lot of time in my local library when i when i started because i didn't want to buy all the books so I went to the gardening sections in, in, the, in my library and uh, just like went nuts and checked out everything. And yeah, and then you get inspired by a couple things and do some, you know, you look online and then take a couple classes or something and, uh, and then trial and error. <laughs> this class has been so worth it just to hear you oh. talk about ancillary things. I mean, you're amazing. I love Thanks. it. Thanks so much. But. We're all still learning. I'm still, I've, I'm still learning a lot too. So it's, it's like a never ending practice. It's, yeah. Anyways, but thanks. So uh, I got a question, but maybe an update first. Um, yeah. So I, I can't, this is Waterloo County, like very rich loam soil. It's a farming big bread basket here. Um, huge and not really monocrop mid-sized farmers but certainly gmo and whatnot yeah. um it's just kind of what it is but we're seeing lots of signs of some regen and stuff like that which is really cool yeah. i uh i grew up a farm kid then i went off to college and went corporate and the whole bit and never really thought too much about it was always kind of the natural path kid and whatnot but about a year and a half ago I, I left what i did went back to school for functional medicine coaching and working with men it manifested in something called man cave medicine then got involved with zach bush uh, incredible program called the journey of intrinsic health which mm -hmm. is how i found out about this mm -hmm. and yeah so i work with men i work on the natural path and um we do kind of peak performance work with men mentally physically spiritually guys tend to look after their cars better than their bodies <laughs> and we go from there and i guess we're well what's interesting is uh aaron dr aaron his wife is a grower and uh not far off from here a very well-known greenhouse and and together they're quite a team but her her big excitement is her focus on the food greenhouse so I got, you know, I heard about you guys and through Zach and the first modules is called B, which is nature. And we've kind of written ourselves out of nature. It's not, we're not even in the dictionary under nature, but the whole idea was just like naked feet, getting my feet in the earth and everything else is, you know, if I screw up, I screw up. Right. <laughs> so, but, but beyond that is like just the sound of nature is medicine, just the sound and watching things move and grow. And, and the fact that, I mean, in Hawaii, that was tricky, so, trippy. Some of the, the plants move if you touch them and stuff like that. It, it was really incredible. So everything I, I learned from, from Farmer Greg here watching that, which was like, well, that's way beyond me, but I'm going to go, I'm going to go with, and I'll take you on a little walk here because I wanted to combine talking with guys is like, okay, the barbecue is kind of where guys focus, right? But what do we put on the barbecue, right? 
and and uh this grower she's like peppers so she's got like i can show you here hopefully i don't you lose you but that is all peppers i got all my herbs i got down in here yeah. i just went with lots of kale and whatnot we just did just the other day i got like 26 of these throughout so i can go away on the weekend still but the whole irrigation thing was was pretty awesome setting that up yeah. but the idea is to try and make this accessible and mm -hmm. And I have been going back to the journey of intrinsic health, telling people about farmer Greg, you guys got to jump in because we talk about nature and gardening, but like, I, I think the access point is so much easier than what people think. Yeah. And you don't have to go yeah. this big or as big as some of you guys are going, but I'll tell you, once you get in there, it is a mm -hmm. freaking medicine and it's powerful. Yeah. So that's my little sermonette. And <laughs> I, I got my, all my tomatoes back here. Mm -hmm. um the peppers are crazy because like think like latin america and think guys like oh i can top it out with with all this hot stuff and you know combine it in your burgers and whatnot so it's yeah. incredible how guys jump in on that like what from what she's told me so trying to make this access point trying to make you know a little bit more sexy the idea of, of gardening and you know gardening football herbs football whatever it is right? <laughs> that kind of thing my my question though and i what i found out is i'm gonna i don't know if i can see there so definitely ground once you put these sprinklers down i should have leveled off the ground better because you get a lot of those things spread about about three feet those uh, and then you can you know you can play around with them but getting an even source of water any tricks there do i do you think i just get some i haven't i just set it up two days ago but getting the ground to be more even or building a bit of a dike system with the ground i don't know any thoughts around that greg is it a drip is it a drip system or a like a spring small spring there's a i've got bubblers uh -huh. and then i've got i've got a, a spray so you can put different you see this thing you can put yeah. different different heads on there to do different things yeah so it it covers it i think i just got to play around with a bit i just wondered what you and then of course i get i got two zones but i get more water in there probably what i need but i i got to make sure i get enough water over there so you can turn them down but anyway yeah, yeah those uh micro sprinklers have like a little adjustable top yeah turn it clockwise or counterclockwise and more yeah but yeah. for leveling the ground, I mean, with those sprinklers, those micro sprinklers, they should be able to um, troubleshoot any like any slight slope because it doesn't look like you have a, a major slope. But if no, you have, just when you get down there, it's a little bit. I should have so did a better we, job before I planted. <laughs> it's all good. We can um, you can do things like terracing. It's like a very minor from you know it's on your in your context. It's to be a level surface and be like almost like a. A step like a stair step almost you know where it's flat and then a it retaining kind of wall almost or what almost like a retaining wall but you don't have to necessarily put up like a you know wooden block yeah. anything, but you could do it out of just out of the soil and so it's just like a retaining wall and that's just a you know essentially a terrace so it's right. a level space wherever you want it and then it just drops 90 degrees down and then a level space where you want it so it's even right. if it's only like a two inch drop or whatever That'll help out. You can use like a uh, wood, you know, two by fours or some rocks or logs to kind of help uh, yeah. help as a retaining wall. Yeah, I thought about that, but yeah, yeah, yeah do I've it. I've got to mess around with it. Like you said, you guys were just talking about. It yeah. helps out a lot. Yeah. Anyway, it's all it's, the updates. It's, yeah, yeah, good that's stuff, awesome. guys. It's really good stuff. I do want to some, get uh, some before and after pics and yeah, to post up. But um, yeah, I want. I I've been telling Marlene. I said we got to get the Project Biom team on here for a call and and yeah. just because that that's growing and growing. Like more and people are getting involved. And I I just think yeah, like get get your feet naked, get in the earth. Like the medicine is so yeah. huge. Yes love it so cool and say so try it for grilling also I, I love to grill zucchinis we have tons of zucchinis so like they grow so easily and when it's hot like 90 85 90 degrees um they just start to go gangbusters so um or okra or uh whatever and the beets the beets we'll slice yeah. like the beets pretty thick okay. it's straight up like yeah. a patty like it, a burger yeah the <laughs> you don't yeah. Eat meat. yeah 
what is this like a round thing and you can just slice it thin so it's like a silver dollar almost or even bigger and then you just grill that yeah super or then obviously like skewers you know skewers are good too but anyway yeah yeah good, good things it's, like trying to hook guys into this and get, yeah. get them more involved right and i think the barbecue and food is to go. Cooking hot well, like salsas like, yeah, with the chili, peppers. chili cook yeah. offs and like herbs close by like you said you know rosemary is a really good one for the barbecue and you like oregano thyme um you know hearty hearty herbs like that uh yeah those, yeah those, those are easy yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, messing with the Ayurvedic side and the cooling herbs and the heating herbs. And I mean, this is, yeah. yeah. It's just, it's just wow. so, so following on to your enthusiasm, both of you guys mm -hmm. uh, have, I don't know how many of you know, Mary Reynolds, the British Irish landscaper. I think so. Oh, if you want some inspiration. There's a movie called Dare to be Wild. Dare to be Wild. Yeah. It's on YouTube. That's the only place I found it. So you got lots of ads. But um, she won the Chelsea Garden Show, the Queen's Garden Show back in 2002, just doing a wild met, you know, meadowscape and just this very Irish thing. So seeing her garden is inspiring. But then I heard some YouTubes from her of recent day, you know, this is 20 years later. And she says, now I'm a reformed gardener. I don't want to force plants into a landscape design just everything except floodplain savannas and mountaintops want to be a forest, a mixed, you know, yeah. like yeah. trees and cows and, you know, that whole thing. But I can't do that in my three foot bed. But um, it's just so inspiring. She said, you got to let land be the way it wants to be. Don't force. Yeah. It. And yeah. I, when you're talking about vegetables, it's a little hard. I don't know how you would incorporate that. But if you have, if you got the space, you just, you know, she said, let the weeds grow. They they inform the other plants and they bring in the insects and the yep. oh, birds nice. and all that. And it's just, I, I got so inspired listening to that. Mm -hmm. I want to go talk to my plants every morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With them. yeah. Yeah, that reminds me of Fukuoka, who's a Japanese um, farmer, and yeah. he's all about natural farming and just throwing seed bombs. He creates these little... Clay, ball. clay seed bowls yeah and throws them and it's just kind of like let it grow naturally as it would without a lot of interference or planning or straight lines and yeah i think that's a great way it just it's a new aesthetic to get used to because we're mm -hmm. used to gardens being mm -hmm. like straight and perfectly mm -hmm. manicured so mm -hmm. that's just like a mental thing to reprogram of yeah. like what is beauty in nature you know and then um it just takes a bit more time probably to harvest because you have to <laughs> Mm -hmm. search a bit more and mm -hmm. yeah um, yeah but yeah that's that's what we did here in yeah. our backyard and just spread a bunch of seeds and see what see what grows and and let nature do its, let nature thing. Do its thing and yeah the the weeds and things that come up first are like are they're like pioneer plants so they're just protecting the soil and they, everything has like has its own cap uh, purpose but we can yeah, so we can grow vegetables amongst amongst that because they're, they're part of nature too, especially things that are just in your area, you know, that can grow in your area or getting from a seed company that's close by. Local, your, your yeah. local seed company. Yeah. Uh, and native plants too, just not only, but, and a lot of, a lot of things are edible that we don't know is edible. <laughs> you know, certain, uh, <laughs> certain, <laughs> certain weeds or certain, you know, native plants in your area. Or even Can leaves use. of plants. Like what was yeah. the one? Was it pumpkin or squash that they yeah. took the leaves with? Yeah, squash. Like we obviously for like zucchinis and squash, we we <coughs> fruit. Sometimes we eat the flower, but you can also eat the leaves. And somebody told me that or on from a, one of our Mita farmer features actually. Um yeah. Wendaka, he's from Africa and he's like, Yeah, it's traditional. We cook, we make this stew with the leaves of the I think it's the squashes yeah but we'll double check <laughs> i was thinking just sorry one um i just had a random thought but for brent about the um there's a really good a uh podcast that i got a lot of information from it's really like it's called the i think it's just the compost brewing podcast or compost tea brewing podcast on spotify um there's a gentleman there that studied under uh, dr elaine ingham who's one of the four front scientists on soil health and so he 
she has, and Elaine has a great, you know, a lot of podcasts and a lot of uh, YouTube videos and like how, like how to brew, even on their website, the soil food web website, they have a total tutorial of how to do your compost tea for free. And um, <clears throat> if you want to get into more detail, look at that compost tea brewing podcast with yeah. Ryan something, Ryan Oaks. I'll take a look. Zimmer? I'll take a look because I'm I, I'm interested because um, with a lot of fruits, uh, fungal diseases are are yeah. common, um, and I'm trying to get away from fungicides as much as I can. And I've yep I've heard on other podcasts that some yeah what's brewing yeah. some biological uh, inoculants yeah inoculants that uh, you can basically boost the plant's immune system um with some of that stuff so it, it something i've just kind of learning about that is very interesting and yeah sounds like it has a lot of promise to help me reduce fungicide applications yeah that'd be great i mean that's like kind of what it's all about and um there's also knowing that not all compost is created equal like we want to and they get it the soil food web um they talk about the the diversity of microbes and there's um so some some compost won't be to completely biologically complete so um you know yeah. they, they use microscopes if you want to get really you know kind of into it uh but there's you know <laughs> bacteria fungi um nematodes beneficial nematodes and um arthropods who are like the four main groups of that create um a really healthy like yeah those are the four main groups that you need and you need like you know, thousands of each of one of those. So uh, hard to yeah. tell without by the naked eye. So, but, but that's why we use ver vermicompost it tends to be really complete. Um, there's also some more, if you want to dive even further, I know the gentleman named John Kempf does yeah. a podcast on, it's called regenerative, uh, the regenerative agriculture podcast. He does, he's a huge proponent of of biological inoculants. And he talks about that considerably with apple production and um, other fruit production. And yeah, he, that's can be good. Yeah, go ahead. That's the, that's the podcast I've been listening to. Yeah, yeah. a lot of, a lot of information, a lot of good information. Yeah. Um, and then time, like he talks about the timing of it all. Cause you know, in the life stage of said fruit plant um, and then the, the time of year and the time of day uh, can, can have a significant, you know, in, uh, can help significantly, like right when the bud breaks or right before bud break, uh, when the plants start to come out. Uh, so, or right when, you know, when it's, when things are dormant, you can do dormant sprays and yeah, just things like that throughout the year. Um, awesome. Yeah. 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 That's good. <laughs> Try to get off the, off the fungicides and onto the uh, organic stuff. Yeah. It, and you can do it with the organic stuff. It's just those, some companies don't make as much money. <laughs> yeah. Well, the organic for, for a lot of the fruits is copper. I mean, yeah. copper that's the heavy product. one, which yeah. is like, I don't know. I'm like, I don't know if I feel better about using yeah. copper or worse just because yeah. it's like, like organic, but it's like, yeah. And accepts, uh, but exactly. And that, that's why um, they can sell you, or companies can sell you the copper fungicide, but it's hard to sell a biological inoculant because they don't have a shelf life you know that's why it's important to do it yourself mm. so if if you can buy biological inoculants you can buy those things but if you don't know how long they've been sitting out they don't know how long they've been on the shelf you don't know when it was made or what it was made with um so either do it yourself or some some a lot of times at farmers markets or close by if there's a soil company close by um do a little research and and ask around you can get somebody in your area that's that's doing that's doing it as well um facebook cool. groups stuff like that yeah so good luck and i'm so stoked you got the you know got the itch or got the like the, the light bulb it's like you can all you can do all these things nat naturally yeah yeah yes thanks, for the, thanks for the links too yeah mm -hmm. for the, yeah you got it yeah I have one more quick question. So my green beans are done. They've told me they are finished with me. So I, so it's this little space um, and the soil's got to be terrible, right? So, so I'm cutting them off at the base, right? I'm not yanking them out of the ground. Do I, can I just like cut up their parts? 
yeah. <laughs> and just lay them there. Um, and then I have a piece of card since it's so hot right now. I mean, is this a good time for me to like do the cardboard thing, you know, cut up all that stuff, put the cardboard on and water it and try and build up that soil so I can plant for fall or. Uh, yeah, it's never like a bad, never like a bad time to do. Um, well, cardboard would be like kind of for, for mulching or just for. Well, because this soil, I, the green beans were the first thing I planted in there. The plants didn't get very big. You know, I probably got about twenty green beans, which were really yummy and all of that stuff. But the plants didn't really thrive there. So, so the soil health, right? Soil yeah. health, and it, this soil's been covered with that red mulch. I mean bark you know so that stuff's painted right yeah, yeah so i'm trying to clear as much of that out of there and so i thought i'd leave the green bean remains and just let that sit and then plant it in the fall yeah. when it's less hot yeah the the green bean remains like all the plants and the stems and stuff if yeah. they're they could be green or they're gonna they're start off green and obviously they go they die back and go to brown yeah uh, they're brown <laughs> they're really brown now that's just like a pure carbon source now um you can leave it on the surface but it's, it could be even better to kind of either put on surface and cover it with mulch or, or compost chicken manure or kind of try to you know mix it into the soil a little bit okay okay just, just dig it down um, but since it's a brown material, that's good. It's already decomposed. It's kind of acts as a mulch now. Okay. Uh, but if you mixed that with any green material, it would decompose further and just kind of build soil. But what I would do, just kind of do a refresh. And if you can, if you have access to compost chicken manure on, um, you can, you can do that. You can, and like, like you were talking about doing, um, in a layer of cardboard and watering it in so layer of cardboard water mulch on top of that or a compost oh, on top on okay okay because then like underneath that'll just slowly if it's wet and it'll slowly break down okay gotcha um you could try to do a cover crop mix too if you if you have okay. it's a good time to do that um it's an it's always a good time to do that but if you're doing a cover crop mix just um let the plants grow like a foot or a foot and a half tall before and then right before it goes to if this one starts to flower, then you can chop it at the base again and uh, mix that into the soil. And that's just like all your okay. leafy green material. Okay. All right. And so like clover or whatever, yeah. some, some kind of. Yeah. White clover. Uh, you did the buckwheat a while ago. Um, oh yeah. I didn't hear. I have them here. Should I, yeah. this is what I should use. Sure. All right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Thank you. Got it. Yeah. About a couple minutes left. If you guys want to, any other burning, burning questions, burning desires, burning. Uh, yeah. Wow. yeah. Question. <laughs> I have one. Yeah. Um, when your resources back from the course, uh -huh. I learned about Oya's. Uh -huh. and there's a the thing online where you can make your own oya, just take a terracotta pot, you know, plug up the hole. And yeah. so we did that. It was an eight inch pot, so it holds about a gallon. Yeah. And in this really small, small bed, I'm finding that it actually has been watering like six, eight inches down a whole lot. And I think my green beans got a little bit of the the roots are a bit wet. So I'm just we're not watering at all until that dries out a bit huh. and, um, so are those green beans going to recover they've got beans they've got lots of buds and they have beans on them but a lot of the leaves are dead so mm. there's some green regrowing great yeah if you look at the 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 shoot like the very tip um if there's a lot of like if the small leaves look pretty healthy if they are bright and vibrant green color and they're kind of shooting up towards the sky yeah uh, that's a good sign. So you can just take off all, like, just take scissors and cut off all the yellow, yellowing leaves. Okay. And that'll help it out a little bit. Yeah. Uh, but it should bounce back. Yeah, like you said, you're moder monitoring the water, and if it was too soggy, yeah, just leave it. Um, yeah. yeah okay. Sample for a couple of days. Got one of these. Oh, you can't see it. You know the the moisture. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep. Oh yeah, that's great. Uh -oh. Yeah, those work out great too. Yeah. Okay. Well, it should still be fine if you're if if the the top part of the green beans look like they're the shoots are still got a good co green color on them. Yeah. Uh, they should bounce back. Okay. Okay. 
and beans are like you know they're it's a sh relatively short season they only last for a few months and then they go but they they die back so it's not yeah. a year round thing mm -hmm. so. hey aubrey had a question there she was starting to say something what, what did what was yeah. it Aubrey? um i was just wondering since i have you know, like all containers and i bought a bunch of organic potting soil and um can you reuse that? Like, can you revitalize that? Like at, at the end of the growing season and obviously in Iowa, we'll have a really cold, <laughs> nasty yeah. winter. Just, can you reuse that? Or is that just like one and done? No, yeah, you can definitely reuse it. Um, you don't have to necessarily take it out of the container and um, like in the, in the winter, because the more you turn it, if the more if you were to take it out of that container and, and then it kind of aerates and it, it can lose some of the nutrients so you can leave it in there in in, the, in a container um sometimes you just need to add a little more uh sand and clay you know like the minerals sometimes the box uh, sorry the bags that you buy at home depot and things um just kind of lack the mineral content of you know sand silt and clay and and humus which is like that's what kind of binds all all this um the organic matter together so if you wanted to add just dig dig down in the in the um in your container and see the moisture level and um, if you can grab a grab a handful of the of the soil and you'll see as you squeeze it it'll either like flake apart and, or it will bind together and you want it to, you know, bind together. And uh, I would say um, in the wintertime, if you wanted to even cover it, you know, so it doesn't really get snow on, on it. I mean, it's still going to freeze, I'm sure. Um, but all those microbes and stuff just go dormant in the winter and then they come back in the spring. Hmm. You can all do, a, we talked about a cover crop mix. You can try to do that before it gets too cold, before it gets cold. Um, sometimes what we've done is you grow a cover crop in the summertime or, or fall, and then um, so it'll grow. The cover crops are just like clovers and some buckwheat or broadleaf, you know, rye, broadleaf grasses. They grow a few feet or like a foot, foot and a half, and then you can chop it at the base before it goes to flower before it's seed because it just starts getting more fibrous and uh, woody as it gets um, a seed but chop that green material it'll be resting on the surface and either mix that into the soil or cover it with right. cardboard, cardboard or mulch um, so that'll just break down over the win the entire winter it'll break down and then it'll kind of um, replenish the nutrients for the next growing season hmm. okay kind and of makes then, sense. yeah and then yeah. maybe the next year add like com compost yeah. or some fresh organic yeah. material to it yeah. yeah exactly composted chicken manure like we keep talking mm -hmm. about is good and then plant-based compost um like the forest floor mix or or peat moss or you know grass clippings or leaves mm -hmm. that but yeah, just keep that soil and it yeah. just tends to get better and better over the years. So, um, yeah, okay, definitely. Yeah, reduce. it was expensive, so I'm like, <laughs> this is like the most expensive, uh, you know, head of cauliflower and <laughs> like five Brussels sprouts, and I'll probably never <laughs> no. all this stuff. But, but like you said, you can't keep reusing it, so you'll get you get yeah. long term effects. Okay, there's, sure. there's no substitute for homegrown Brussels sprouts either. So. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm hoping. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, keep using it. Great. Anybody got any background in uh, in sea moss, Joe? First, first brew that I'm doing here. That's oh, sea moss. We we uh, I've only bought some at the farmers market before. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it comes in like a package here, and then you. Yeah, <laughs> we are doing um, coming up soon at Farmers Footprint. Our next meet of farmers is seaweed farmer, oh, so we okay. dive deep into seaweed and ocean yeah. harvesting and all that. So that's cool. an idea. 
but yeah, I don't know much about CMOS particularly. Supposed to be incredible, incredible like gut health stuff and reset. Yeah. And yeah. Sure. yeah, I was wondering what you had there. In that smoothie. <laughs> was, are you gonna oh, drink God. it or is it for your plants? That's what I. <laughs> oh no! Oh, it's like smoothies and. Oh, uh, smoothies. oh yeah! Oh yeah! No, it's all great gut microbial kind of reset stuff. So yeah. Nice. Part of the Zach Bush world. <laughs> <laughs> You're in it. <laughs> Awesome. Well, so good to see many familiar faces and new faces. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, we'll be back next month. Yay. Same kind of thing. Just come with questions, free form. And yeah, post photos in the garden club if you're in it with your updates and before and after pics. We'd love to see that. So yeah. Yeah. Just for those uh, people with a lot of heat and things right now, keep the shade over the top if you can, and then keep mulch on the ground to cover the cover the ground so it does, the sun's not you know beating down onto the onto the soil, and uh, that's the, the biggest things in the summertime to to keep in mind. A little bit of shade and then keep keep the ground covered. Yeah. Anyways, but yeah. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Times. You got it. Yeah. Hope, it, hope it helped out a little bit. And if you have other questions and stuff, you can reach out on the Mighty Networks or on Instagram or whatever. We can <laughs> keep your questions going for next month as well. All right. All right. Get your farm on. Yeah. Right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.